Welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lina, a freelance journalist and moderator, and together with Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans, we are going to take a closer look at the latest events in the world. Hi, Roger. Hello, Lina, and hello to our Facebook audience. Yeah, good to see you. So, what was in the news this week? <laughs> What's well, new? it's time we talked about money. I mean, um, they say money makes the world go round and uh, we're going to need a lot of money after the COVID crisis. And Biden is talking about his recovery program and uh, we know we've got a big recovery program coming in Europe. But it's not just money that makes the world go round, it's trade that makes the world go round too. And uh, the world has got a new leader of the World Trade Organization. Let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at her. This is uh, Ngozi Okonjo Evela, and uh, there you have it. First uh, female African boss of the WTO, they say. The WTO is responsible for keeping our ports open and will have a huge role to play in making sure that vaccines reach every corner of the world and that our supply chains don't break down. And it's really important that uh, Ngozi Okonjo Evela is the president of the WTO and it's not just because she's the first black WTO president, it's not just because she's the first woman uh, WTO president, it's not just because she's the first WTO president from Africa, actually she's from Nigeria, she's also got an American passport, uh, but it's because she's a very good economist and what's interesting is that she's not a trade economist. You know, they don't mention that, do they? It's the first time that the head of the WTO hasn't been a trade specialist. She's a development specialist, a development uh, economist. And things have changed and we can't carry on in the way that we have done in the past. And uh, she knows that. She said that in her first press conference. Do we want to carry on doing things as we've done different before or do we want to do things differently? I'm here to do things differently. So I think that's uh, wonderful news. I'm surprised that she's not top of the news. I rather suspect that even if a, a black woman astronaut from Nigeria had been the first person to land on the moon, that that would also not have been top of the news. It would have been the usual thing about a dog bites a man or a man bites a dog, that type of story. And then they would have said in other news, a black female uh, astronaut has landed on the moon. That would have been in other news. Ngozi Okonjo Evela was a little bit in other news. She should have been top of the news. So what else grabbed your attention this week? It's been another milestone in Hungary uh, in the descent to the next circle of hell. Um, as the last remaining independent radio station, Club Radio, has been uh, shut down, taken off the airwaves. Little Victor, it reminds me of those, um, you know, those car journeys that I used to have as a, as a kid, asking your parents to turn the, the radio up, turn the music up, because there was some cool music on the radio. And uh, Little Victor's a kind of um, big daddy in the car who would not only switch the radio off but sort of throw it out the window and spend the rest of the journey singing his sort of uh, greater Hungary folk songs and uh, he wants to decide what people listen to in Hungary and club radio is off the airways uh, but you can still find it on the internet I'm pleased to say. This is a wonderful map, actually, uh, of uh, a program called Radio Garden, which is um, a kind of Google map for independent radio stations. Radio on the left, uh, last independent radio station in Hungary, uh, died on Valentine's Day. That was a nice uh, present to Hungary, wasn't it, to, close, to shut down club radio. Uh, but they're, they're, you can still find them. Don't worry, they're still there on the on the internet, but no longer on the airwaves. And Poland have uh, got the same idea. They want to use uh, the same tactics, the same techniques that Orban has used uh, to clamp down on independent media in Poland. It's a mixture of tax measures, administrative measures, uh, use of public subsidies, and it's shutting down the independent uh, radio independent media and therefore 
uh, uh, really an assault and no further assault on democracy in Hungary. And uh, it's going to uh, a place near you next. It's going to Poland next, the same idea of cutting, sh shutting down the media. So we'll have to talk about that next week. So Roger, tell me who's on the naughty step this week? So uh, I'll show you who's on the naughty step, Lena. Um, no competition here this week. It's uh, Mr. Nice Guy, Roger Stone. So who's Roger Stone? Roger Stone is a political lobbyist. He started uh, under Nixon and he finished up with Trump. And he's a master magician of all of the dirty tricks in the book. And he's one of those people in politics who uh, knows how to bury things. Uh, that shouldn't be found by investigative journalists and so on. And that's what got him into trouble for hiding evidence and so on. And of course, he uh, ended up in jail, but he was pardoned by Donald Trump. He was in Washington on the 5th of January, the day before the riots. And he was seen there in the top picture with uh, some of these masked men. They look like Lukashenko uh, bully boys, don't they, in balaclavas. They are, in fact, the so-called Oath Keepers. Uh, which is a right-wing group of militia and former uh, military and uh, first responders and uh, police officers who swear, take an oath to uphold the Constitution. And they were there looking after Roger Stone, made a public appearance and a few public speeches in Washington on the 5th of January. And then on the 6th of January, the very same bully boys in Balaclava, not Lukashenko's bully boys, Roger Stone's bully boys, there in the crowd that uh, invaded the the capital the next day so uh, roger stone of course has uh, said as far as he knows none of them have done anything wrong but this is the kind of um, problem that we have today militias um, profoundly dangerous people interfering in our democracy and uh, roger stone's made a career out of it and there he is. Well done to the New York Times for exposing that story. Let's look ahead. What's coming up? We saw a, a, a picture of uh, moon landing uh, earlier on. And of course, what we're also going to be seeing are pictures of the rover landing on Mars. And uh, it used to be said that men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And you can play these games with which planet are you? And so I thought, well... If the EU was Mars, what would the UK be? And I decided the UK would be, would be Pluto. And, you know, Pluto has been pushed out of the club, like uh, the UK, except the UK wasn't uh, pushed out of the club, it voted to leave the club. Pluto is no longer meets the uh, International Astron Ast Ast Astronomical Society's definition of being a planet. It's too small, it's no longer a planet. It hasn't been a planet since 2006. And I, so I thought to myself, well, I wonder if this is what's going to be the fate of the UK. Uh, you know, in a few years time, people might be saying, <laughs> why is the UK no longer a place? And we can see the piece of the jigsaw there. So I think that, um, you know, Pluto's left the solar system, the UK's left the EU. Pluto is now a dwarf planet. The UK will uh, is smaller, is reduced as a result, and uh, who knows? In years to come, it may no the UK may no longer even be a place. When it comes to new Europeans, is there something interesting coming up? Uh, an event we need to watch? Yes, there is, Lena. Next week is the twenty sixth of February, and day of resistance to the Russian invasion of. Crimea and it's also uh, World NGO Day actually World NGO Day is, a, is the 27th so World NGO Day and we're having the next in our uh, series of events on uh, Belarus and Poland and Ukraine Quo Vadis Europe and at our last event you'll remember we had Andre Bastinet speaking and there is Andre Bastinet and there are some more bully boys in black balaclava. Remember the story about Roger Stone, but this isn't Washington, this is Minsk, and that is the office of the Association of Belarus Journalists, and that is our friend Andrei Bastunets, the president who spoke at our last Quo Vadis meeting, 
And those bully boys of Lukashenko so have got uh, his and the association's computers wrapped up in plastic bags and are taking them out. I'm pleased to say that Andre has not been arrested, that he is still free and we are in contact with him. But um, that was going on on Monday in uh, Belarus. Uh, we hope Andre will be able to come back and speak on uh, next Friday on 26th of February at 7 p.m. New Europeans News Facebook Live tune in and watch and support uh, all of those people fighting for freedom and democracy and human rights in Belarus, Ukraine and Poland. Thank you for keeping us informed, Roger. Thank you for this Friday casebook. The audience, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. This is a great way to help new Europeans and our movement. So have a great week and thank you, Roger. See you next week. Thank you, Lena. Thank you to your audience. See you next week and remember to press that button. Thank you.